But okay, before we get into game one, let's recap what's going on this season um, in the Middle Eastern region. So Middle Eastern RLCS starts in three days, uh, which is something to remember, by the way, that this season, the Middle Eastern RLCS events are following more closely the Middle East uh, weekend, which is a Friday, Saturday weekend, not a Saturday, Sunday weekend. So if you want to catch the action, for the Middle Eastern RLCS events, you need to tune in on Thursday, not Friday, and then Friday, Saturday for the playoffs instead of uh, the Saturday, Sunday that you would get in every other region. I believe, think all the other regions too do uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so yeah, just three days and we're going to get to see these two teams play in the MENA RLCS Regional 1 um, for the split. So very, very uh, excited to see that. Um, but okay, last split. Just a quick recap. I'm sure most of you guys, uh, well, maybe maybe not most, but yeah, I'm sure some of you guys already know this. But in RLCS, Khaled, TRK, and Ahmad, Falcons, played against Rule 1 with Nader. So that was Rawas, Kaliers, and Nader. Um, I believe three times. And in fact, Rule 1 have the head-to-head. -head. Uh, they beat Falcons twice. Falcons only beat the Rule 1 one time. However, Falcons did take the top seed and go to the Fall Major because in, uh, in, in Fall Regional 2 in the Middle East, Rule one actually lost to Mossin's old team, Twisted Minds. So they've uh, essentially what Rule one have done is they've picked up the only other player who beat them last split, except Falcons. Outside of Falcons, I guess three players uh, did uh, you know combine to make the Twisted Minds team that beat Rule one, um, and they've picked up well who they think is the star player from that team to contest Falcons uh, in the winter split. So. Really, really interesting um, to, to, to think about just how close these teams are on paper. Um, but let's just get into game one and watch this best of five. This is a replay, of course. Um, I'll, I won't be pausing. I'll just be talking about the games as I go because I know most of you guys, I know some of you guys like uh, when I pause and talk. Uh, but for this one in particular, I'm just going to let it play through um, because this will probably be content that most of you guys have not seen because um, the Laib tournaments are not really that well um, advertised in the English-speaking Rocket League world. So I'm sure I'm sure these games are going to be... Uh, this will probably be first time viewing for a lot of you, so I'll just let it play through. But we're on Mossin POV. Uh, that's M7SN, you pronounce it Mossin. Um, I think some players in the scene just call him MSN. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the 7 in, uh, in Mossin's name is a heavy H sound. So I think they say Mehsin or something in uh, Arabic. But... Everybody in the English-speaking Rock League scene has been calling him Mossin for the longest time, and I, I think it sounds like a pretty cool name, so... Um, yeah, that's what I call him. The Kaliers are last, the Twins need no introduction. Um, and, and pretty much everyone else in the pitch doesn't need, uh, doesn't need an introduction these days on my channel, um, but Mossin might need a bit more. Um, he's actually one of the players who's been at the top tier for a couple of years now, um, ever since the uh, the old uh, Falcons roster, Sandrock Gaming, or the old... Falcons uh, organization, Sandro Gaming, took the number one spot, um, you know, two, three years ago. Very few teams in the Middle East were able to contend with them. One of the teams that did do that was Mossin's old team. And that's a really good fake, actually. Love that. Clearly early call from uh, Rawas to fake this. And then Mossin actually gets a underdunk to bounce the opening goal into the, bottom, into the top corner, sorry. Um, I think Nader has been released from the roster. Nader was the player that... Um, that Rule 1 clears and uh, Ruas picked up uh, at the start of last split. Um, just last minute they, they grabbed him because uh, Naupo, their third, was banned for a year. Um, so yeah, they, they just grabbed Nader. I think Nader did a great job considering the circumstances, you know, considering that he's been just completely thrown into the deep end with very little time to prepare for the season, or, or the split, I should say. Uh, yeah, he, he did a great job. I think he's a very solid player. We might see more of him in the future at the top level. But for now, yeah, he's joined another team. I can't remember off the top of my head what uh, his team is going to be for this split. But I'm sure you'll see him in these uh, MENA RLCS events. Um, yeah, Mossin is definitely an upgrade. Like I was saying, Mossin's one of the players who's been at the top level in MENA for a long time. Um, he's been, uh, you know, touted as a, the mechie guy on his uh, old team. He gets a, a second goal here off of a Khaled mistake. And yeah, that gives him a second goal. And, you know, this is his first ever match that he's played with Rawasi Clears against Falcons. A great start. First ever game that he's played uh, in, com in competition. I think they probably have scrimmed by now. But um, yeah, first first game against him and he's already scored two goals. Can't really ask for more than that. 
Uh, yeah, Mossa knows well. For, he's not just made a splash regionally. He did play at the World's Wildcard. Didn't get the best results with the, his team. They weren't able to go th all that well. Um, but I think, you know, if that team had stuck together, Ams, Mossin, the Zonix, I think, that, you know, if, if they played in a European um, LAN, they would do a whole lot better. Don't forget, they did make top eight at Gamers 8. So they, they beat Dignitas to get top eight at Gamers 8. They look very impressive in that format. Um, that was Mossin, Mossin's old roster. That is a miracle maker, thanks for the information. I'll uh, definitely be looking out for him. So 3 0 game one. And Mossin getting involved in every single one of these goals. Falcons have looked a bit quiet. And the first time the Falcons played Rule 1 in the fall split, they looked pretty rough. It was a Swiss stage, 2-0 um, round match, and Falcons got swept. Rawas, Ru uh, Kaliers were just dominating, and Nader looked like a, an incredibly solid third for the time uh, that he had to practice on that team. I was super impressed. Um, so much so that, you know, based on that regional one alone, you, you had to probably give Rule 1 the edge in the race to the fall major. I mean, they had the points edge. Beyond that, they you know they beat Falcons in Swiss, they beat them in the grand final, and Falcons did not look anywhere near um, organized enough um, to to match Rule One, who you know weren't really um, forcing a lot of goals, but they were capitalizing on unforced errors. So yeah, Falcons at the moment, I, I'd say there's been a you know a couple of unforced errors, namely the second goal is a standout unforced error from Khaled on that one to hit the ball straight towards Mossin, but not, not the untidy performance that started the fell split for Falcons here so far in this game. Um, thank you, by the way, to Doopy93 for the Prime, Squid, Squid's Body for the three-month Prime, your friend Marcus for the 34-month year one, Sweet Mozzarella for the 10-month Prime, and Griffin0413 for the five-month tier one. Welcome back to the channel, guys. This game looks like it's just going to be too much for Falcons to even attempt to come back. They've been held to five shots, Definitely real one with the stronger midfield presence in this game. They've synergized um, more in offense as well. Thinking back to the first goal where Rawas called the fakes that Mossin could come in for the goal. Yeah, just a clean performance from real one. They look very uh, much a match for Falcons, at least in this uh, tournament. Yeah, the uh, Falcons roster does seem to elevate when it's RLCS regional time. They've with one, uh, what is it now, 11 out of the 12 regionals that they've played in, which is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> they've won 11, yeah, that's right, isn't it? They've won 11 out of the 12 regionals. Let me just hide the screen while I load up game two here. It's 1-0 um, for rule one. Here's game two. All right, who should we watch on this one? We can watch a Falcons player here. Who do you guys want to watch? I think it's mostly TRK uh, being requested. So let's, let's jump on TRK, Pov, and... Get stuck into game number two. Kukin is looking thanks to the 11 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel. This game is played last week in a Middle East tournament. Um, just a community tournament in the Middle East. Got all the good teams in it. This was the semi final, actually. Both Rule 1 and Falcons ended up on the same side of the bracket. And this is the semi final. Um, I, I, I will spoil who. Uh, well, I will spoil one thing. So, if you don't want spoilers for the rest of the tournament, if you really do plan to go and watch the rest of the tournament on the Leibs, the, La the Laib Twitch VOD, uh, close your ears now. Okay, the winner of this did go on to win the whole thing. So, I won't say who wins. But the winner of this series did go on to win the whole thing. So, no surprises there. I think everybody would agree that these are the top two teams in uh, the Middle East for this split. Yeah, looking at the Falcons POV now, looking at TRK's POV specifically, you can see the issues that they have. It's getting the ball out of defense. It's a really good uh, midfield presence that the Rule 1 players have been able to conjure up so far, scoring four unanswered goals between these two games. Uh, do I think Naipo will join when he's unbanned? I have no idea, to be honest. Um, I, don't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine Falcons would make any changes unless they started losing regionals. You know, they, they lost one regional out of 12 that they've played in. They've won the other 11. <laughs> they lost regional one in the fall split this season. Every other regional last season and every other regional last split, they did win. Um, regional two of last split, they beat the team that knocked out rule one. And then regional three, they did beat rule one. It was a kind of crazy situation that 
Falcons in Real 1 played in the grand final of Regional 3. Winner goes to LAN. So when it was all on the line, yeah, Falcons did get the win. Uh, but Real 1 still have the head-to-head -head record in RLCS this season. Ahmad 1v1 with Ruas. Okay, you all know that Ahmad loves his air dribble bumps in 3v3. Uh, you know, a lot of people could like to call it cringe, but I think it's more clinical than cringe, in my opinion. And Ahmad is one of the best at doing that at pace in threes. You've got to go faster in twos and threes if you're going to air dribble bump because you're often being chased from behind by the goalkeeper's teammates. Um, so to get one quick touch on target there, but not too quick so you can't overtake it and uh, bump the goalie, something Ahmad is extremely good at. Um, now, if it was... It's, if it was so easy, I think Ahmad's like air double bump ratio has got to be super high. Don't have the exact stats, but we've seen him do it so many times, both in lands and online. Uh, you know, if, if it was that easy to just get that one touch that lobs the ball on target and then fly perfectly in front of it to demo a goalie, which he just demoed Rawas, by the way. <laughs> Probably, in my opinion, the best goalie in the world he took on 1v1 there to score. Uh, yeah, if it was easy, everybody would be scoring as many as he does. And... Uh, no, no, not everybody's scoring as many air double bumps as he does in twos and threes. Sweet for you. Thanks to 33 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel. Looks like Falcons have woken up now off the Ahmad goal. Often does need to be Ahmad to have that um, performance to just wake Falcons up. I've, I've never, you know, really seen Khaled and CRK have a bad series when Ahmad is playing well. When Ahmad's playing well, the whole team looks like they're playing well. Um, and, you know, some people come to the conclusion that therefore Ahmad is the best player on the team because when he plays well, the team wins. Uh, but I don't think that that necessarily is just a, a default true statement um, because you've also got to consider that, you know, sometimes uh, TRK looks like he's playing unbelievably well and it's the, the uh, you know, the rest of the team doesn't step up to his, to his level. It's, uh, you know, the consistency, I feel, of TRK in particular, um, but also... Khaled and defense uh, that allows the the full Falcons roster to just win whenever Ahmad has a good day. Whenever Ahmad plays well in offense, they just win. Because you know that TRK is going to be that guy in the midfield, just always getting two for ones, always uh, being so difficult to get past. And then, yeah, you've got Khaled, one of the best third men in the world. It's quick up from the TRK, very quick to the backboard for the double. And the lead now swings towards. Falcons. Johnny Boy Fanboy 1, thanks to 3 month pride, really appreciate that. So Jerry Atreek, thanks to the 7 month pride. Welcome back to you as well. well let's see how Real 1 decides to play the final minute here. It's always interesting to see what a team tries to change when they're down in a final minute as opposed to tied with a minute to go. Um, the obvious change that any team's got to make is, is just to throw caution to the wind in some regard. And uh, that's why we're seeing a lot of jumps right now. TRK is just baiting a lot of jumps there. He's quite happy to let um, Rule 1 go for the ball because you can see that they don't really have a good angle to threaten Falcons with. That was a big dunk from Clears. That's going to be there, but this is not ideal all of a sudden. TRK just runs straight back towards the center. He didn't want to leave the center of the box open in that position. Um, I didn't think that was probably the only weak angle that they had uh, in defense. He might get the third here. He does. Yeah, the, uh, the, the attempted control in defense from Real 1, they didn't want to just slam the possession away um, inside the final 10 seconds. It does end up causing them to concede. Swack Frog thanks in the 28 month tier 1. Did I see James Cheese lost? I did. I saw James Cheese lost. We'll, sure we'll, we'll talk about that later on uh, uh, tonight on the Chalked cast, I'm sure, because we've talked about the, uh, the APAC region and what we're expecting to happen throughout the season there quite a lot. That's a crazy result, though, uh, that it's happened this early. I, I, I said that I think they will lose at some point this season, um, but I didn't think it was going to come this soon. I thought probably more likely to happen in the last split once they've already qualified for Worlds. I, fi I figured maybe James G's auto call for Worlds already, and then they just slack off one regional and lose. But they lost already, so well played to uh, Detonator to beat them. Okay, who do you guys uh, type in chat right now who you want to watch for this game? Uh, we could swing back to a Rule 1 player for this if you want. We could look at Rawas or, or Kaleers. We've already looked at Mawson. Type in chat whose POV you want to watch. A lot of requests for Kaleers, but we'll go Rawas. I think I'm seeing mostly Rawas right now. So let's get into this one. Very evenly matched so far. Less mistakes in Game 2 from 
Falcons, and uh, looks like that might have surprised Rule 1 just a little bit. They were waiting for mistakes that never occurred. Oh, what a save. How has Ruas managed to keep that out? I don't know. They're all in a panic at the moment. He's had to use all of his boost just to pop the ball clear. Luckily, he popped it as a, a lob, not a slam into the ceiling. That was a crazy stand uh, on the goal before that. The fact that Ruas managed to get such a strong 50-50. Again, just goal side, 50-50 from Rawas. Those of you who watch his 1v1 games will know that that's what he likes to do. Uh, more than anyone else that I've seen at the top level right now, Rawas saves his dodge for his saves. A lot of other goalkeepers prefer to fast aerial uh, to get rapid acceleration upwards um, and you know try and surprise the attacker with a quick interception or a quick save. That's not really Rawas' way. He just single jump aerials up saves his dodge the maximum duration and then uses it to really give himself the strongest hitbox possible um, as he attempts to make the save or even to make a last second adjustment on his uh, save if his car is not lining up the way he wants it to. Hey, thank you to the true uh, buster for the 10 gifted. If you've just been gifted a sub, then be sure to thank him. Because a ton of those uh, subs are actually gifted, random gifted resubs. Congrats to you guys. I yeah, really appreciate that, man. Cheers to the support. Nice little lob there by Kylie. Good positioning by TRK to um, receive the back pass up on the ceiling. You know, kind of in a similar way to the back corners often being talked about as a safe place in defense. If you keep the ball in your back corner instead of in front of your net or instead of just clearing it towards the halfway line, um, it's a pretty safe place to defend from. Um, but yeah, same kind of idea. If you can just keep the ball right next to your back wall, much harder for the other team to score immediately they are, they'll have to combine with a pass um, if they are going to get a goal nice 50 50 here from the last simple stuff and just goes straight through uh, for the win this is from the laib la3eb tournament la3eb all one word la3eb it's a arabic word i'm not sure what it means it might just be a name um, but yeah that's that's where the tournament came from Ruas never really won to make a, a rapid move. We'll, we'll switch to Clear's POV for this one because Ruas is quite far away, but that's just really, really, a, I think, very important. Um, not just mechanical, but also positional knowledge from Clear's. Look at what he does here. He doesn't just immediately leave the area. I know a lot of uh, coaches, it means it means gamer. Okay, good. It means player. Cool. Got, uh, got lots of Arabic speakers in chat right now. Um, now, look at look at what Clear says here. This is super... Uh, instructive he doesn't just try like in many situations if if you think Khaled's going to shoot here you you probably want to be in the net so you've got the best angle to see what's what's happening um but what Khalid realizes he thinks Khaled's going to hit the ball into the ceiling so he just turns around um in the center to cut it off look at this he, he read that gets up quickly and how important was it that he did that if he'd backed off to the back post or it's Moss and or are you on Moss and POV sorry we're, we're on Moss and POV here this is really smart I love this all the same yeah you guys are right look at that it's and the the, the instructive uh, thing to note here I'm going to get right back into gameplay in a minute we're not going to pause too much um, is that you need to cut off mid passes if they're coming off the ceiling if they're coming straight across the box this is super important just as important as defending the net and the backboard Cutting off mid passes, pros do it exceptionally well, and it's one of the reasons that you want to be um, looking out for those infield passes and looking for opportunities to break rotation, get in early. Just very clean dribbling there from Kalir. It's not a lot of boost to work with, but he had enough to rattle a shot into the top left. Do you think Mossin is better than Nader was? Yeah, I definitely think he's an upgrade. I, I rate Nader. I think he's uh, got a lot of potential, but. Mossin is a proven competitor. He's had many deep runs, finished in the th uh, the rank three team in the Middle East last season, um, made it to the world world's wild card event because of that. It looks like uh, Ruas somewhat been that save attempt. I'm not able to 1v1 him with a quick flick to the top corner. Ruas tried to deflect it into his crossbar. He did intentionally delay his dodge there so as not to hit the ball too early. He was trying to hit the ball after it goes slightly past him 
so that he could deflect it upwards into his crossbar without taking a lot of pace off the ball. That, of course, will allow the ball to bounce to safety. Um, if you hit it too early, you're just going to center it for the opponents to follow up. But yeah, it leaves a lot um, more chance for it to go wrong if you time it incorrectly. Yeah, Mossen's got more experience. He, he's had very consistent results over the past few years. Just a, um, you know, a, a, a player that Nader, uh, or not Nader, sorry, that clears and Rabas, I'm sure, rate very highly. He's, like I've said, the only... Mossen came from the only team that beat Rule 1 last split, apart from Falcons. He only lost twice, uh, all of last split, Rule 1. Um, once to Twisted Minds, once to Falcons. Once to Mossen's team, Twisted Minds. Series score at the moment is 1-1. This is game three. Very early interception there from Ahmad. Tierke is skipping past Kaliers. Khaled beaten to the ball by Rawas. It seems like the Rule 1 roster are having a really easy time getting rid of the danger. Oh, that's a complete misplay though. Rawas. Must have thought he had follow-up here. We're going to take one more look at this because this doesn't uh, make too much sense. So there's two two things that could be going on here. Number one, Kaliers might be yelling in comms that he's on zero boost or he's slow back. And then uh, Rawas sees Mossin committing. So he knows he's going to be alone for at least a few seconds here. So he might be just thinking to himself, I'm going to go because Khaled won't think I'm going to go. Um, because this is a position where... Rawas is isolated as a defender. You've got two decisions that are really viable when you're isolated as a defender in 3v3. Number one, you stall. You don't dive. You just get in the way of the ball. Wait as long as possible before committing. Um, that allows your teammates time to come back. And even if you don't get much on the ball with your commitment, you're, there's a higher chance that your teammates can follow up because you've, you've stalled long enough for them to do that. The other option is to do what Rawas did here and just dive in. But the problem is, Khaled can see him coming. We need, this is why we need to see Khaled's POV of it. He takes 50-50, and yeah, you can just see Rawas coming there. So the it, it, the angle from Rawas, he can see that Khaled's behind the ball. Um, so he's hoping that Khaled won't see this coming. He's hoping the ball will be eclipsing his approach. Um, but if we switch to Khaled POV, you can see that that is not the case. Khaled's car is slightly to the right of the ball, and therefore the uh, ball is not covering Rawas's approach as well as he thought it was. Yeah, it leads to a goal. Yeah, not necessarily a terrible decision. You've got to go at some point. You, you don't want to shadow every time. You don't want to just stall every time. Um, the more you do stall for your teammates to recover, the uh, more likely a rush challenge like that is uh, going to work because you, you're, you're going against the, um, the tendencies you've telegraphed to your opponent up until then in the match. It's a great hit from Mawson. Good speed from Falcon's defense, though. Actually, very good speed from... Falcons defense. They managed to turn this one around. It looked like a dangerous position. Once more, it's just control in defense from Rule 1. I'm, I'm liking the patience here. I'm liking the, um, the composure. We have an overtime in game three. Yeah, Rawas, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Rawas is aware that he's in a 1v2, so that makes it even more the, the incentive to challenge early increases if you're in a 1v2 because, of course, you don't want to be a sitting duck for a demo. You don't want to be a spectator for a passing play. Um, therefore, rushing in to get the ball when you've got a decent opportunity to do so is a good idea. Um, unfortunately there, Rawas, he thought he was hidden. He was not. Well, here's his backflips here. Ooh, and a bit of a panic. Another panic potentially, but Rawas really rolls with the ball well there. Stay on top of it. You have no idea why most Middle East players play the Fennec. I, I've got a theory for this. I think that the most popular car um, in any region tends to be a copy of like the cars that, of, of the win the players who are winning a lot. So think to um, RLCS Season X is a very good example of this. In RLCS Season X, I'm pretty sure that Europe had a uh, a lot more Fennec players than uh, NA. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure Europe had more Fennec players than NA. Why do you guys think that is? What team in North America all played Octane and uh, were winning everything? Not a difficult question. Uh, but yeah, there was a team in NA who all played Octane uh, most of the time. Um, I think, uh, I think, well, I'm just going to spoil it. I think Garrett 
did switch occasionally. I'm sure Justin switched occasionally as well. But yeah, they were all Octane mains. And they, uh, yeah, they were winning everything. So everybody's probably playing Octane to try and emulate them. Then you look at what's happened in the Middle East. Who's winning? Khaled's team. Then suddenly, who's winning? TRK, TRK comes along. He's like, he's insane as well. Even Ahmad plays the Octane. Or even Ahmad plays the Fennec. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time. So, you know, when this team's dominating everybody, of course everyone else is going to want to do what they're doing and see why it's working. You just play the Fennec. And yeah, in Europe, there's been a ton of Fennec play in the uh, French community. Chaussette initially popularized the Fennec before any other player worldwide. He's a French player. Fairy Peak had a ton of success in the Fennec. Um, Alpha 54 had a ton of success in the Fennec. So these players really popularized the Fennec in the French community. Um, and the French, the, the French Rock League players dominated Europe for years. Um, it recently, uh, England's been on the rise, but um, yeah, the, the damage has been done. The Fennec has been popularized. Yeah, Seiko as well. That was a bit later, of course. I'm talking, you know, wh where did this all start? Because I think Seiko is a continuation of something that was already happening. Uh, Fennec popularity in Europe. Already, already uh, you know, way above the Fennec popularity in NA by then. Um, yeah, you, you know, recently in North America, the dominant team has been Gen G. Um, apparently, Jack's been playing the Fennec, I think, pretty much exclusively. So, that, that I think could get more people in NA playing the Fennec. Try and uh, see what's work, why it's working so well for, for Jack, especially since he keeps talking so much about the bot Fennec meta, Carmicorp dominating Europe and Fennec. Ooh! A great ceiling double by Khaled. Well, of course, we've got to take a look at that one. Khaled one touch. Two touches off the ceiling, flies back down, and it looks like Mossin was not expecting that one. We'll go Mossin POV as well here. Yeah, just to see. There's a little boost. Thought Kyle was going to go for the backboard, but he just went straight for the goal. He didn't have the acceleration to get there. So it's 2 1 um, in favor of Falcons. Now let's get into game four. I'm just going to hide the screen as I uh, load it here. Okay, who do you guys want to watch for this game? We're back to a Falcons player if you guys want to choose one. Now is the time to do it in chat. Is USA top three in the world for countries? If you're talking about 3v3 countries, uh, definitely. I think the top countries in the in the world right now are very clear. Um, for Rocket League, I think USA is a top tier country. No question, S tier country for Rocket League threes. France, of course. Uh, then you've got England recently. Um, you've got to, you've got to give them a, a spot there. Uh, with, you know, Rise, Joyo, Abjack, and Nolly, four of the players in the last major final, all from England. Um, so yeah, England, France, USA, probably your top three. And then the, the other dominant countries um, who just have a ton of Rock League talent compared to their population are Brazil and Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know, for their population size, they're just a ridiculous amount of talented Rock League players. And uh, we don't get to see too many of those from... Uh, from Saudi Arabia play international threes events because Middle East only have one spot for RLCS majors. Um, I really do believe that should be two at a minimum. Uh, I've said that many times. Uh, but for Brazil, we do, you know, see a ton of talent. Uh, a little bit of help, a little bit helped by the fact that Furia moved over to North America and allowed, uh, you know, other teams to take their spot uh, in South America at the top uh, while still remaining world-class themselves so yeah brazil brazil's definitely i think fourth right now i i I'd rank it usa um uh, well I, I don't know usa france england are the top three and then i'd say brazil is the fourth uh country after that now hold on, hold on what okay khaled thought this was going to be a dunk step run khaled pov here um uh, doubles it downwards i'll try to read a touch from Kaliers. Kaliers didn't make a touch and uh that ended up forcing the miss out of Khaled. Or baiting the miss, I should say. How about a 20-team tournament work? There's there's plenty of ways that you can make a 20-team tournament work. I mean, uh, you can't do Swiss, of course, because you need 16 for that uh, to be functional. But the my favorite way to do a 20-team tournament would be um, four groups of five round robin with... Uh, three teams progressing from each group into a playoff just like we have for this split so just basically what the, the exact format we have for this uh, split in the winter except with five uh, teams in each group instead of four um, but yeah still with three progressing so it's, it's very simple very simple stuff 
Um, it, even if you have 18 teams, uh, you know, a non um, simple number, you can still, I think, make it work with um, two groups of four and two groups of five. 18. You know, not every group has to have the same amount of teams in it. As long as the uh, amount of teams being eliminated from each group is the same. Yeah, you do need to be careful with tiebreakers in uh, in an 18 group format. When you use different size groups, you want to make sure that the uh, groups are you know equal across the board. Like, uh, I think the, the way to do it, you know, no, no disrespect to the two regions mentioned, but I think the the sensible way to do it would be to have um, APAC and Sub-Saharan Africa um, make up the fifth team in two of the groups, and those two groups would have two teams be eliminated, and then the two groups of four would have um, one each be eliminated. Did I say 18 groups? Of course, I meant 18 teams. That's really good. Uh, Good force there by Rule 1. I do want to watch one thing again though, because I was talking about something else here. So this is Ahmad POV. I want to see TRK um, POV before we... Whoops, I've clicked past it. No, I didn't. This is TRK. Right, this is an important thing to note. And I think it's something... Um, it's something that uh, Falcons can get wrong. Uh, they did get it wrong a lot of time. Uh, a lot of times at the previous major. Um, so let's just briefly talk about it. So Ahmad loses uh, control of the ball, doesn't take anyone out of the game to do so. Khaled is recovering. Now TRK needs to get this ball to a safe location if he's going to jump. If he's going to jump for this, he cannot let the ball drop down in a threatening location. It needs to go safe because Ahmad isn't back yet. Khaled's going to be alone. Um, but that is just not a very efficient flight path by TRK. He goes a bit of a loop to the right before um, making his way back to the ball. Of course, he's trying to get a favorable angle to block it, but all that ends up happening is it goes straight into the ceiling. This is the worst possible thing that could have happened. If this goes sideways, it's better because it's going to take longer to bounce back into the middle. This is the, just an immediate bounce back into the middle way before Ahmad can get back. Look where Ahmad is. And uh, yeah, now Khaled's completely out of the game. But yeah, uh, Ahmad probably shouldn't go for this boost. Oh, he definitely shouldn't go for this boost um, when he sees what's happening. I mean, as soon as he sees this, he has to, uh, I think, assume... I mean, it, it really, what's happened... There's, there's two things that could happen here. Number one, TRK could get a good 50, and now Ahmad does have time to get back. Or number two, what actually happens? TRK doesn't get a good 50, and uh, he needs to be back much sooner. But I think that the smart play to make here would be not to path over big boosts at all, just to path over these, because you, 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 you can get the same boost pretty much. What's he on? I forgot what he's on. But yeah, just going over the small pads would have made more sense. He's already got 30. You don't need to go for the big boost. The only reason to go for the big boost is if you think your team's about to attack and you want to pre-steal it. You want to steal it before the attack commences so that when your team is attacking and uh, the defenders go to get their boost, it's not there and they're not entirely sure when it's going to come back. might be easy for your team to steal again when it respawns. Um, but this doesn't look like a safe one for me. I mean, looking at it even when in motion here. One more time. We're just going to let it play through now. Yeah, that doesn't look safe. And I feel like he, he actually saw the touch and still turned further. I mean, it's one thing to have faith in Khaled in a 1v3 to stall long enough for you to all come back. But that I don't think is a smart rotation back uh, from Ahmad. Very greedy boost seal. Should probably go for the inner circle instead. The inner inner circle of boosts around the, sm the small pads. Um, make more sense to go for in that kind of situation. Red Jow, thanks for 79 months. Tier 1, that is insane. Says I don't even play a Rock League anymore, but enjoy watching it. Hope you're good, mate. I'm glad to hear it, man. It's kind of the same for me with a lot of old games I used to play. I don't play them anymore, but I still follow the eSport or I'll follow some content creators I like. Just, you know... Um, enjoy it in a different way so i'm glad to hear that you're you're doing the same good to have you back amazing whiskey thanks for nine months here one as well and uh club mosses for the 18 month prime welcome back also it's funny, you know so to, just to expand a little bit on what i was saying about you know ahmad taking a long time to get back there i think that you, you know, one of the things i've been really impressed with uh from a lot of the very top teams that right now thinking carmine corp thinking gen g um they just seem to be so selfless and adapt perfectly 
to each other's needs. And that might, you know, sound a bit vague, so I'll, I'll be more specific. Um, I'm sure you, you, if for any of you who play ranked with comps and with uh, teammates that you know um, and play with regularly, you'll, you'll be pretty familiar with one of your teammates saying, no boost, or I'm low, or maybe they say that they're out of the game, or they say that they're, uh, they're in the other team's half for a bit. You know, you're, you're probably quite used to hearing the other, uh, your, your teammates say that basically they need you to chill because they're not going to be part of the game for a bit. Um, but yeah, it, it's pretty actually common knowledge, even at, not, not just in the pro scene, but in the Rock League scene in general, what you're supposed to do when your teammates are on low boost. Like, uh, it, let, let, let me just, uh, between this game and the next one, ask a couple of, I'll, I'll ask you guys a couple of scenarios as a kind of a quiz before we jump into game five. It's, kind of, it's now 2-2 in games, so we're about to get into game five. But before we do that, because I want to talk about game five uh, when we get there, what do you do? What, what is your main goal if your whole team are stuck in defense and you have no boost? What is it, what, you've got two main goals to accomplish in those kind of positions. You're stuck in defense and your whole team has no boost. Uh, you know, really, what are you trying to do there? Let's see. Stall. 1v3 and score, not exactly not get scored on all the time. Yep, that's real all the time. Get back a big of pennies. Own goal. Yeah, a lot of great suggestions here. Get small pads and rotate. Um, yeah, a lot of good suggestions here. Low 50. Uh, bump them. Maybe not a good idea. Uh, getting in, into fights with uh, full boost opponents when you've got no boost is usually going to work pretty badly for you. Um, try to bump the ball. Okay, right. So the two main ideas and the two main uh, uh, things you should be trying to do when you're stuck in defense. Uh, number one, you want to, and this is very common in 1v1, you want to look for opportunities to turn the momentum the other team have into something you, your team can benefit from. What do I mean by that? I mean, if the other team or are, 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 if the, one of the other team's players are about to line up a shot or a pass where they're hitting the ball hard, remember they've got boost, they're moving supersonic. If you see an opportunity to block one of those touches to suddenly generate power, you would never be able to generate yourself. It could be a 50-50, it could be a block. That is a good thing for your team generally because you can get the ball to bounce away from your goal and give you all some time to breathe. So all, you've got to look out for those opportunities. You'll see a ton in 1v1. You'll see low boost 1v1 players trying to force 50-50s, volatile 50-50s, so that the ball will get away from their goal, give them time to grab some boost and yeah, then the, of course the player with boost will get to the ball first almost all the time but as long as the ball is going to a safe location that's fine you can grab boost and get ready to defend the next attack um, but that's not something you can do when you have the ball yourself so when the other team have the ball look for those opportunities when the other players have the ball look for chances to create volatile 50-50s that will clear the ball using the momentum they are applying to it but when you've got the ball Almost the opposite is true. You should not be trying to power clear the ball. You should not be trying to generate massive hits because you're not going to do. You can't do it um, most of the time unless you unless you can pinch the ball with low boost. Unless you're very good at pinching um, with with low boost or low momentum, which I know some people are. Yeah, there's not really many ways that you can get rid of the ball um, unless you have a ridiculously powerful flick. But even flicking in, in defense is so risky. If you get dunked on, then you're just going to uh, be in massive trouble. So that's why. This whole stalling, low 50 game, get behind the ball, get goal side, just waste time is, is such a big deal these days. I mean, if this was a defensive position, let's... Yeah, I mean, it is 1-0 here. Imagine there's time left on the clock and Rule 1 have no boost. This is a this is a great position for Rule 1 to be in. There's not really much that Falcons can do with this ball as long as Rule 1 um, get opposite the ball. If they see somebody come in on, on this side of the ball to center it, yeah, just get, get, up, get on this side of the ball block that center with a single jump uh, you know, into the ball. You don't even need to dodge, just like control it. Keep it here. As long as the ball's here, you're fine. As long as, long as it's not here. <laughs> as long as it's not floating out in the uh, edge of the box in a uh, shooting area. As the ball's low, next to the wall, next to the ground, you're safe. Keep it there by time. Let your teammates grab boost behind you while you're just keeping the ball in a safe position. So that that's kind of uh, the, the two things you want to remember when you've got the ball and you're stuck in defense low boost, control it. When the other team have the ball and you're stuck in defense with low boost, try, just try and look for chances to use them because they're going to try to shoot, they're going to try and pass. You need to look look for those opportunities to block 50, intercept the ball, ping it to safety. Um, somehow get the ball clear. 
Uh, so you got time to recover. Okay, I've hidden the last score. I wanted to go over that before we could jump into game five, because I know once we're into game five, um, we want to focus on game five. So, okay, let's go on. Well, since this is mainly, this video is mainly about rule one and their new player, we'll, we'll go on Kalir's Pov. I don't think we've been on Kalir's Pov yet. Um, so yeah, we don't get uh, a game from Okalad Pov this video, but we'll um, we'll switch to his Pov again if anything interesting happens involving him. Sorelic, thanks to the three-month prime. Hecky dude, thanks to the five-month prime. Uh, he says, "Remember the other day when you uh, told me my dog flattened in a la laundry mag?" I don't know what that means, mate. Uh, wait, hold on. Remember the other day when I told you guys about my dog that I flattened in a laundry mangle? What is that? Is, is this something I'm not? Uh, is this a meme that I'm not familiar with? Uh, but the, the second part is why I wanted to read this. He's he's doing great, but today he was naughty. My neighbor got in her car to drive to work, and to her horror, he had wriggled underneath the wind windshield wiper, um, like a <laughs> like a a brochure. That's not ideal. <laughs> That's not ideal. I definitely wouldn't like my dog to be in that. I, I really thought that that was going to lead to some toilet humor. I was looking forward to it, not going to lie. Um, <laughs> that would be... <laughs> that would be incredibly unfortunate if your dog just went... <laughs> yeah, just uh, decided the best place to go was underneath the windscreen wipers. I don't think I've ever heard of that happening before, but it seems feasible. <laughs> that would be that would be a great thing to witness. Terrible thing to have happen to you. Toy Gun, thanks to the 6 month Prime. Welcome back to the channel. A little bit of space for Kalirs now. He is the, I think, main um, attacking power in Rule 1. Of course, Ruas is that uh, that third man. Now, okay, one thing that we're going to pause for here and take note of is, okay, kalir has got a ton of boost, but he also takes the mid boost. Now, when do you want to do that? When do you want to do that, chat? When do you want to just take all the boosts, even if you've already got some? He did it again here. He took all the boosts, but why did he do that? I'm going to let it conti continue playing while you guys are discussing this. Not, not a particularly difficult one. Yeah, to deny. He saw that the next person over, or potentially the next person to pass, pass by that boost was going to be an opponent. So he just took all of them. Now that's going to look really bad on his boost efficiency stats. But was it a bad play? No. And that's why stats can sometimes be misleading. Because that's going to make his boost overfill stats. And uh, his boost usage stats when he's already supersonic look very bad but you have to actually look and see what's happening you can't just say look how much this player is overfilled look how much this player has boosted while supersonic that's not a good thing in some cases it is a good thing so of course if you've got 100 boost you can't deny 100 boost bad you need to actually use a little bit of boost if you're gonna deny um, another one by sealing it yeah very tense game five so far Great center by Mawson, though, that's 1-0. TRK getting out of sorts here. We're going to uh, watch his POV of this one as well. Yeah, it's a very awkward position that TRK has chosen. You know, I did. I, I pointed out earlier on in this series, I'm going to pause a bit more in this game because this is game five. We've, we, we now know how both the teams are playing. We want to talk about it. Um, I talked about how moving off into the center was a good play from Mawson earlier on because it looked like the ball was going to head center, but this doesn't look like it's going to head center. It looks like it's going across the goal to me. So actually being in TRK's position is not ideal. Um, this is a mistake that lower rated players will make a lot. Pros can sometimes, I want to just say, pros can get away with this because even in positions like this, they have the mechanical ability to you know, make very awkward maneuvers and deflect the ball to safety. Um, this time TRK doesn't do it. He doesn't get it right at all. Uh, but pros often get, get those positions uh, right, even though they're in an awkward position. I wouldn't suggest that any of you try that at home, though. Um, much better to just get inside the net slightly uh, so you can advance towards the ball instead of having to reverse and take off at awkward angles. That's a good turn by Kalirz. Now it's going to be there for it. I don't know if Cal is trying to knock that ball into the corner. Sometimes it's favorable to do that, just to keep it next to the wall. Sometimes, of course, it's favorable to hit it into the side wall and uh, double it clear.
Yeah, TRK did look like he wanted to advance and uh, challenge the ball, but he already had a teammate pressuring it, so probably would have made a bit more sense to just give his teammate in front of him a bit of space and react to the touch um, that happens. Valir's going to let Mawson move in on the play. Mawson kind of just giving it away, though. He had an option to pass to Rawas to the right there. The, that's actually resulted in a turnover for Khaled. Tries to flick into the pre-jump in CRK. And uh, luckily for Real 1, it didn't work. Yeah, it looks like lots of chances for Falcons here. Real 1 are all defending as a unit. They're spacing very, very nicely here. Never want to be too far away from a teammate. Um, as oh, I love this attacking formation. You don't want to be too far away from a teammate who's defending. Look, look what happens here. Kaliers is moving up behind Mawson. The reason for that is he's not sure if Mawson is going to win this ball or if it's going to just be a 50-50 into the sidewall. If that's a 50-50 into the sidewall, he wants to be close so he can beat TRK to the ball. And now that Mawson wins it, he actually just backs off. And uh, I, I think this would probably be a position that a lot of uh, you guys uh, are familiar with. How often do you see this when you play Rocket League, when you're playing Rocket League ranked? You're right behind your teammate and uh, he is advancing into the corner and a lot of you are probably thinking, well, the best place to be, obviously, is here, just behind him. So I'm ready for the center ball, right? Well, actually, no. Sometimes it's better to back off and become third man. You, He was second man in the play. Now he's just backing off to become third man. That really shows a good uh, understanding of what's going to come next from Kaliers? Because where is Ruas while all this is happening? He's over here. He's on the right side. Um, now, the player who can get to this little pocket at the back uh, post edge of the box faster is actually Ruas. He's on the right side of the pitch, so you can just drive forward a little bit. He's there. Kaliers would have to cross over the pitch diagonally to get to the back post. And uh, Kaliers knows that actually the pace that Mawson's advancing down the field here there's a good chance this ball's going back post, so I'm just going to let Rawas advance, and I'm going to come in behind him as third man. Really, really good stuff from Kaliers there. Didn't force himself into the attack. Let his teammate go first, and it works out. Now, if Kaliers were to chase closely here, be right behind Mawson, there is a chance that he could have scored this, but Rawas has more coverage because he's on that side of the field already. When you think about your attack as not having a you know designated first man, second man, third man, and having more of a fluid second and third man uh, positions, your opportunities will increase significantly. Same could be said about every position in Rocket League. You know, it's it's a fluid, fluid rotation. There's never a you know complete um, designated positions first, second, third. They're fluid depending on what where the ball goes, depending on what the opponents do, depending on what your teammates want to do, depending on boost situations. Um, but as far as attack goes. Oh, look at this. Well done by Kalir. He's got bump, but used it well. But yeah, in terms of attack, I think this uh, this is something you guys can apply to your own games. Think about it as which one of you, uh, which one of the supporting players is on the left, which one of the supporting players is on the right. Where does the ball look like it's going to be going? Is it crossing to the other side of the pitch? Okay, as since I'm right behind it, I'm going to hang back a little bit. Does it look like it's going to go backwards, straight back towards me? Okay, I'm going to move up on my teammate. It's going to move in behind me. Um, it, it's all situational. If Mawson was looking to near post backboard that, then I'm sure Clears would advance. Save there. So they're, they're really dominating this third game. Great defensive recoveries. Um, Clears just cutting the third man out of the play there with the threat of a demo. Yeah, it's not just a, a mechanical team, and that's, you know, a, a lot of people probably look at this team and think, yeah, mechanics, and that's it, but. You can clearly see that there's a lot of decisions being made here by Kaliers when he wants to go, when he wants to use his pace and his mechanics, when he just wants to sit back a little bit. Um, bit of a careless kickoff though, I mean they're up by four. They've tried a back corner kickoff there, you can tell because Kaliers is side onto the ball. Uh, notice where he goes here. Um, he tries to go on the outside edge of the ball to, to hit this one. Uh, the reason for that is he's trying to deflect it in this direction towards Mawson who's gone back corner or maybe he's just thinking Ahmad is going to try and do the same thing and I'm going to kill it middle for Rawas who's cheating close but you know whichever it was if he was trying to deflect that back corner Rawas shouldn't be this close if he's trying to kill it Rawas sh uh, er, Mawson shouldn't be um, you know 
all the way over here in the back corner. He should probably at four nil just be chilling. Just be just be like uh in a in a position where he can easily get back to the goal. Um quickly. Yeah, he, he, he at least uh, one thing I want to credit Mossen for, he did let go of boost and turn pretty sharpish back to the middle. Notice what Mossen does here. I, I, I do like this. Here, see there? He's already let go of boost. He's already turning because he doesn't want to just continue boosting uh, straight through the ball and end up somewhere over here down the line. He actually turns earlier so he can have the chance of covering a direct shot and yeah that actually does force TRK to delay his shot it's not completely open so that's good by Mossen um, honestly I would have preferred just a safer kickoff not a close cheat kickoff would have made much more sense to hang on to a four goal lead uh, now we've got a three goal lead and a kickoff which is a lot more feasible to come back from still not the most feasible thing but right now they're probably screaming look out for the demo okay they didn't go for it <laughs> and now we're good now you're safe now you're into midfield play. Should be fine. Um, GG's. So the first tournament matchup. Not an RLCS matchup, but a tournament matchup between Falcons and Rule 1 with their new player, Mossin. It's Rule 1 who come out on top. Um, and unlike their you know past split where they were able to beat Falcons with Nader, I think Falcons looked better in this series. They look closer to their, uh, their, their best regional farm, their online farm than they did at the start of the fall split last uh, uh, year. Uh, yeah, fall split uh, 2022. Falcons did not look good in Regional 1. Then it re they really stepped it up in Regional 2 and 3 um, after taking a couple of L's to Rule 1. Um, I'm curious to see if they're going to do the same thing here now that they've lost in a community tournament to Rule 1. And they know that Rule 1 are going to be even better now with Mossin. Uh, will Falcons have been grinding hard for Regional 1 and come out with proper form, unlike uh, last split uh we'll find out on thursday lcs zero zero thanks for the eight month prime welcome to the channel welcome back i should say um really appreciate that but yeah that was that was three two uh rule one looking very good looking uh looking very solid with uh moss and looks like they can really fight for that midfield more um w when falcons are uh are coming at them something that they didn't do too too much with nader well they did they didn't the first uh regional but not not to a great degree uh, so that's that's very promising, very very scary looking team.